I am with Steve today from Meet the Owner, and if you've been on the channel for a while, you'd have met Steve before with his good lady Jan on a Princess 40. Now, we did the Princess 40 flybridge a year ago. Steve had just bought it. Steve, your boat appears to have turned into a Beneteau in the meantime. Indeed, yes. <laughs> so, here we are again. Yeah, absolutely. So, so this uh, is the boat, yeah. and it's a, a, a 38... GT Beneteau GT38 Special. Right, right. It's a nice looking boat, but it's very different to the Princess. Yes, it is. And uh, I think we hadn't expected to be here quite so quite so soon. No, 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 indeed. I think what would be great is, should we have a quick look around this one? Sure. You can show us what it's all about. And then I think to sit down and have a chat that, through your boating history and what's happened. Sure, okay. Would be fascinating. Let's do that, okay. Excellent, so, I'll follow yeah, you on. Come on board. Okay, so this is the bit that makes a difference to the Special, isn't it? The yeah, extended they platform. Yeah, an extended platform normally stops, it, stops here, but this allows you to get a proper tender on and, and you know, a couple of chairs or whatever so yeah it, yeah. it does actually make quite quite a lot of sense otherwise you're, you're just kind of sitting here yeah it, it's a worthy worthy addition excellent and this is very much the sports cruiser style so we've got the uh, the cockpit area here yep. and the cabin is down below you don't have the deck saloon you don't have the flybridge but you do get a lot of protection for this area from having the obviously the hardtop on it yes exactly i think mean, we were keen to when we decided to go down the sports cruiser route was to have something that didn't have too much canvas. Mm. Uh, I mean, I like targets and things like that, uh, but they definitely are of a certain age. And I think um, this is less hassle, it's quicker, it's push of a button thing. I mean, obviously the potential is more to go wrong, it yeah. hasn't yet. Um, but yeah, so it's it's easy, push a button and everything everything's open opens up and you've just got a little bit of canvas at the back here to, to open up like we've done today, as it's a nice sunny day. And it's a nice big area actually, isn't it? It's bigger than the cockpit you get on a similar size flybridge boat, obviously, because you don't have the deck saloon. Uh, absolutely. We easily set six and I you know, with a couple round here we could we could get get eight round here. I mean this this halves so this this closes up as well and spins around if you want it to. Um, and of course, we've got everything I suppose that you expect in a in a sports cruiser. So, uh, barbecue mm -hmm. uh, and sink, excellent. Sink there, hot and cold. Um, a bit of storage uh, and uh, standard sort of fridge. Um, one of the one of the unique things I think about Benito uh, is the central driving position. Yeah, indeed. Uh, we kind of like that having had the the flybridge before where you're kind of offset you've always got a mullion in your in your eye line a little bit you know you, can, you, you get used to it yeah it's not it's not dreadful but this actually is really nice to drive from central position and of course if you've got people joining you you're not having to step over because you've got the central uh, uh entrance part i think that's a good idea and it's a nice thing i've seen it before where you just have a single bench across and sometimes the helm is over on this side and if you're at the helm you've got to clamber over people almost or push everybody off to get everybody on <laughs> exactly. whereas here exactly. you've got three seats but every single person can get in and out yeah without displacing anybody else yeah. i think that's a nice detail that and we've got a there was your bolsters so mm -hmm. you can stand up in the helm i'm yep. five ten uh but a lot of space still, so I'm not sort of sitting here with my head poking out the top. Yeah. Um, so you, you've got a, you're quite a, quite a good panoramic view, and obviously drop down here, and uh, everything's good. It's, it's a it's a really nice driving position. You know, this this adjusts up and down as we want it. One of the other things we've in, we've enjoyed using and getting used to very different again from our, our old P40 was um, the IPS. Uh, equivalent for for the outdrives. Right, the joystick control. So we've got the joystick control here, uh -huh. which if you haven't used one, it's like witchcraft. Right. It, it literally is like witchcraft. I have no idea. Well, I kind of know how it works, but to to do that with your fingertip and the boat just moves sideways, mm -hmm. it, it's quite astonishing. Uh, it does make quite a bit of noise, um, but there's obviously a lot going on as the outdrives vector independently. Um, we've put a bow thruster on this year. And that's just to make the whole thing a little bit quieter. So, right. So I prefer to drive the boat just on the drives yep. if I can, and then a little bit of bow thruster uh, yeah. uh, just as we, we, we're coming alongside. Uh, but everything's really good hatable. It's a nice, <laughs> it's a nice driving position. <laughs> And uh, yeah, we, we took our time deciding on this boat. I think we looked at one of your videos and, yep. and we, we came to our shortlist and, and, and this was it and the boat came up at the right time. So yeah, we, we've been delighted with it. Fantastic. Let's have a little look inside. So. Um, 
again, one of the things that makes this the special is uh, we've got some lighter woodwork. So again, we're trying to lift the whole dark, dark feeling with that. So this is this cream finish. Um, it's painted rather than wrapped, so it's not going to peel anytime soon. But it, I think it just gives it a brighter, a brighter feeling. Apart from that, it's really standard, standard Benito. Everything just works. I mean, they're not the biggest boat manufacturer <laughs> for nothing. Um, this is a this is a high low, so this drops down, and we've got an extra. We haven't used it yet, but there are extra couple of cushions that that, that drop into here. Um, yeah, independent lighting all round. Um, here we have a yeah, rotary fridge, standard fridge rather. So again, all pretty standard stuff. Uh, flat screen TV, and in here we have. Oh, which one is it? Uh, combi microwave. Okay, that's helpful. Yeah, yeah exactly. There's, so there's no oven as such, but do you know what? We don't cook big meals on board. No. The, the, the combination actually works quite nicely. Mm -hmm. We've used it a couple of times. Uh, yeah, providing you read the instructions, which is a very unmanly thing to do. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> yeah. I, have, I, have actually, I don't want to be it on camera. Yeah. I have had to read the instructions and it works, it works very well. Yeah. Um, we've got gas. Uh, mm -hmm. I think again, like uh, previous boat, I'm quite comfortable with gas being on board. We don't have a generator, yeah. So we, we can cook independently with that. Um, yeah. And we normally have a coffee machine and things like that here, but uh, but they're missing just now. I notice as well, big skylight in the ceilings. You get a lot of light into this area, We're don't you? Very clever with that. Cause that could yeah. so easily have just been a small porthole or even a, a, a flat flat space but yeah you look straight through uh, the screen and uh, yeah just the light just floods down here and then obviously we've got we've got portholes uh, old school portholes either yeah. side and blinds uh, ocean air blinds that drop down for a bit of privacy in the evening nice and then owners coming forward yeah so um i guess you could call it on a center line mm -hmm. um but it's big enough certainly to get get off and on either side um overhead opening hatch again blinds that come down there's storage underneath as well, so we've got a couple of big drawers. Oh, still got something that one. <laughs> and there, uh, and there, and there. And then hanging lockers uh, either side with a couple of drawers. I don't know whether they're just hanging lockers. Yeah. You've seen that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but again, look, nice, nice and airy. I mean, it, you know, I, I easily fit on, fit on this bed. Um, and um, yeah, it's very, it's very comfortable actually. We don't get any slapping or anything. Uh, we've had a few, a few nights at anchor, and it's, it's been absolutely fine. So yeah, we're, we're, we're really, really enjoying this boat. Brilliant. Okay, and another cabin at the back, I think, of Rambaradi, and yes. the heads, of course. So some, ca some people think this perhaps is a slightly larger cabin, um, and I suppose they're looking at it in, in absolute terms, it probably is, but it's a little bit compromised for being the owner's cabin. I think because you. You don't have the abilities to get out either side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. But yeah. this can be made up uh, 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 this way as a, as a single, or across the way as a as a very big double, mm. uh, and it's the full width of the boat. Right. And yeah. You've got this step down area here, which means you can you, you know you can stand up fully and put your socks on or whatever yeah. you need to do. Yeah. Again, blinds either side. Huge amount of storage in here, so all these lockers op open up. And they're cavernous. They go right down to the inside of the hull. So they're, you know, that tends to be where long-term storage things go uh, that, that we don't need to be to, to be got at quickly. But no, this this is a good-sized cabin. You know, we've had a few friends staying on board, and they've all commented on it. You know, surely this is where you should be sleeping. Yeah, you know, that, it, it is for a mid-cabin on a on a sub forty-foot boat. That is quite exceptional. Because normally they are a little bit compromised. It, it's exactly that. Of course, you know, you, you've you've got. It drops down, but with the the, the uh, cockpit floor. Yeah. But you can sit up in bed. It's it's absolutely fine uh, yeah. without uh, <laughs> requiring any uh, any soft padding <laughs> overnight. Um, so that's about it in here. Yeah, fantastic. Just the heads, I think, which is on this side. Yeah. So in here, yeah, standard heads. Mm -hmm. um, as always with my boats, I've converted this to electric fresh water flush. Oh, okay. So you don't get that inevitable boaty smell that yeah. you just get from, from all the, uh, uh, the salt water that comes in and sits in the pipes. Yeah. Um, we've put a heated tail rail again. Again, it's a standard sort of thing. Jan insists on it. Mm -hmm. and, but I know, what, I know what she means. You know, you've been out for a shower or, or whatever, or, or a little smell off the back of the boat. You just want to hang it over and, and just, just, just warm it off. 
Yeah. Um, and it's like a wet room, I guess the shower is sort of kind of directly yeah, it, in there. It, exactly that. There's a curtain that sort of tucks in away and it's on a, it's on a track, but it, it comes out, there's a couple of poppers, keeps everything dry, actually. It's very, it's very, it's very good. It's very, very, very practical. Um, we've used it quite a few times rather than just going ashore. Mm. You know, so that, that works very well. Fantastic. That's the interior. Uh, engines, I guess, we could have a Yeah, ab a quick absolutely. Look at. So, um, these are under the cockpit floor. Uh, one of the things I really liked about this boat was because I do some of the maintenance myself is how easy it is to access them. Okay. So, literally, let's come up. Yeah, that is good. For some boats you have to move the table and exactly stuff like that. that. It's just a I pain. Mean, you can, you can do. Yeah. This is absolutely fine. An access down here is for a 30 foot boat is absolutely massive. One of the things I've done here is put some lights in. Just to I should have put those on for you. Yeah, okay. Right, so um, yeah, you can get all the way, all the way around these engines. Um, obviously on out drives. The, the explanation for the space is obviously you want space to put things like generators, um, air conditioning sometimes can be specced on these boats, so they needed to build that space in for them. And yeah. they've got that, so this, this boat doesn't have that, so it's just walk around space. So it's so easy to do my maintenance and, and daily checks, weekly checks, I should say, that uh, you don't not do it. Yeah. Sometimes if it's too difficult, you might think, oh, it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> so exactly what you mean. the last time I looked, it'll be yeah. fine, but it isn't. You know, yeah. you, every time we go out, we, we, we do, I do just stick my head down there and make sure everything looks like it did when I left it last. Yeah, that's, and, that's uh, very wise. Yeah. So yeah, that, that works very well. We also use the stowage, so we have a, uh, a dinghy and um, uh, well, a torpedo. Uh, yeah. So we've gone, we went electric. Two reasons, really. Uh, you, you know, noise. I think mm. uh, that they're, they're much more efficient now, uh, but also weight. So yeah. trying to lift the thing off the back, you know, out of the water off the back of the dinghy is, is tricky. Whereas you can break the thing down and and, and take it out in bits. And, yeah, and totally. Stow it in bits, so it, yeah. it actually works works very well. Yeah. And surprisingly fast. I'm not connected to Torquedo. No. But, but I'm I'm really impressed. I'm a bit of an evangelist about electric outboards. Yeah. Yeah. So. No, I'm with you on that. I've got Torquedo for mine. The other thing I like about it is. I always find it a bit worrying putting a petrol engine into the engine room, you know, if it leaks a bit of petrol or, or anything like that, yeah. you know, electric engine is a worry. And the other thing is, of course, you can literally charge it off the boat. So yeah. it's like, you're not thinking, oh, it's getting a bit low, I need to go and get a gallon of petrol from the petrol station and bring it down and top it up. You just yeah. plug it in and then you're ready to go again. Uh, uh, absolutely. So it's noise, smell, it's all, all of those things. Yeah. You know, it's quite spooky. You know, we were using it to go up the Beaulieu River um, earlier on in the year and you can sneak up on things but you can wildlife doesn't scatter as you sort of drift by you know yeah. glide, glide by it's very serene I'm, I'm, a, I'm a real convert i'm with you on that completely yeah totally great stuff superb well that is the boat and i think we need to talk now <laughs> about, about why we've ended up with this yeah yeah soon. yeah yeah i think that'll be fascinating so last time we spoke a year ago you had just bought a princess 40 flybridge i think it was an was it a late 90s or was no, it 2000 no, uh, 2002 2002 of course it was because it's one of the last wasn't it exactly that yeah she, she was she was a light car and and we 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 went through a mini refit so we, we thought oh, about actually going through the whole sort of uh, sea tag sort of journey but but couldn't really justify it in a boat that value mm. and so we we just did a mini refit and we did that with princess uh, we basically looked at her cost not only cosmetically but also engine wise so they did a full engine service you know all the valves and everything uh, but then we refreshed the whole interior which you know involved carpets all the soft furnishings and mattresses um, all those sort of things that, that you the soft points that you touch really and everything that needed looked like it was worn out so some of the cabin sole needed replacing and things like that so we got her looking exactly how we 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 uh we, we wanted it and we we enjoyed uh, owning that boat you know we had a lesson from john mendez we were very i was quite confident in how she was handling and then we decided to to do a two-week holly on it and i think we would come up and see you guys up in uh up on the dark and uh uh, it, 
it was an eye opener. So the, fir the first thing we 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 would say about the boat is she performed as well as they could. But I think we have to qualify by saying you know she was an older an older boat. So she was quite juicy. Quite, so it, it was quite expensive it, going to Weymouth and back. Unexpectedly so. I mean, we you buy a power boat, you expect that you know, there is going to be a fuel cost. Yeah, that, that's a given. But it was a thousand pounds each way, uh, you know, in in diesel. Wow. Uh, just about. Yeah, we, we only just about made it back as well. I think that's probably you know the fact that the engines were uh, older style, uh, sixty three P's. You know, the TMD, TMD sixty three P's. Yeah, that's the sort of pre-electronic control it and all is, that sort of stuff. Exactly, the pre-the D series. Yeah, yeah. so that you have, have got the single injectors rather than the common main injectors. Exactly, and that comes with benefits. And as much as it's a simpler system, which on an older boat it has benefits, but bulletproof engines. Yeah, totally. They're great engines, but they're never going to be as efficient because they don't have that sort of high-pressure common rail, electronically controlled, exactly precisely metered, it, all that sort of stuff. It, it, it's exactly that. Um, so that was that. They're a little bit smoky as well. Again. That's probably to be expected, um, mm. but it just was a bit of a performance. Every time we stopped, we, we, we had to clean the back of the transom, uh, and not the transom, actually the whole back of the boat. But anyway, right. that was that, but performed faultlessly. So we, 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 we went to Weymouth in one hit uh, from, from our base here in Swanwick, um, obviously once we got out into Solon, and um, as I said, performed faultlessly, but what we noticed was even if the weather was good, I think it was a three or a four, no more than that, you were taking spray over the flybridge. So we were surprised at that. We were kind of out in the elements a bit more than I expected. So we were having to wrap up. You were getting blasted by, by you know, 25 knots of wind against you, a, you know, which is about, seemed to be a good, good cruising pace. Uh, and and we were, as I said, we were getting sprayed, so that got boring after an hour or so. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I will be honest. So there'll be people on saying, there'll be people here saying, well, why did you buy a power boat then? You know, if you mm. didn't expect that, but we, we, we didn't. So then we tried to helm from the lower helm position. Yeah. Which is fine, and you can do that, but you are, again, a little bit compromised, and I would say qualify that by saying on probably a, the older style flybridge boats is that you've got less of a screen to look through. So as you, you go a little, even though we trim the boat and we're a little bit bow up, not, not too much, you are having to stand and peer over a letterbox style size windscreen uh, at the bit that's over the, over the bow and the horizon. So, and obviously you want to have a good lookout. So that was a bit, something again we, ha we hadn't expected and try as we might we couldn't trim that down enough and we weren't overloaded you know there's just two of us on board uh, that's just the way the boat the boat uh, 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 planes yeah so then we thought well we'll just reduce it then to 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 uh, displacement speed and they never like that you know if you're going five or six knots that's fine but then you know that's that's sailboat speed so we wanted to be up around about the 10 12 knot and then you start dragging the back of the boat around the engines are laboring so again it, it just turned out not to be the boat we really wanted yeah uh, be, because of that um and and then we and then we get the english weather so it comes, comes into play so during last year july it was either too hot to be on the flybridge you know baking sometimes even with the with the bimini up or it was you know and then by the time it got to eight o'clock in the evening or no, it got to be too cold. And so we were coming down or putting blankets on and spending more time in the saloon. And we got chatting after a few few weeks of this, thinking we're, make, we're spending most of our time in the saloon of the boat. Why have we got a flybridge? You know, we're dragging around, you know, a ton and a half or a couple of tons or whatever it is of plastic that we don't need to and pay for the fuel to, to do so. Maybe we need to rethink this. And bear in mind, this is our first power boat. So we sat down, thought about it. We looked at a couple of alcoholic videos, uh, and thought actually a sports boat is probably where we where we need to be. So it was a good time to sell. The boat was in great condition. Uh, she, we put her on the market, flew off to see my family in Jersey. Um, by the time the plane touched down, we'd had enough. Wow! <laughs> so, literally. The first person's boat 
decided that it was going to be for them. I'm not surprised, to be fair, because it was a really good looking boat. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think we spent the money in, in in all the right right areas. Definitely. And do you know what? The guys bought the boat, um, taking on the Thames. So I think she's going to have a fabulous retirement. She'll never go over five or six knots now. Yeah. And that's exactly perfect for a boat, perhaps at that at that age. Um, he absolutely loves her. We, we kind of been in semi contact and and it, it, via the broker. And uh, I understand, you know, she's she's enjoying life now uh, on a much more sedate sedate pace. Um, and then we bought this in. Um, so that happened in in August, and we bought the beginning of August. We bought this at the, by the end of August. Right. Wow. Uh, from from Chichester. Yeah. Um, and it's you know it needed nothing. You know, we wanted to have a modern boat with modern modern systems that didn't need to be a project. And this certainly hasn't been that. It's been a few little things we've done, like the heads and that, that I've mentioned. But, but really, that that's about it. The boat's needed nothing. It's super reliable. It's very fast. What year is it? Uh, 2015. Okay. So, well, they often say it's a six to 16 boat with a 15 hole number. I think. Right. So it's, it's, yeah. it's launched in. in yeah. 16. So eight years old. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, she's got this air step hull, mm -hmm. which I think is, is a is a Benito patented idea. I've got nothing to compare it with, but actually, when once you're clear and you decide you want to get on the plane, it gets up on the plane really quickly mm. and handles super smoothly. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, as a thrill, she's absolutely superb. Um, turns on the sixpence, um, just as happy pottering around as well. Um, she's got the joystick control, which, as I mentioned, which is. Which is uh, otherworldly sometimes. Uh, now with the bow thruster, there's there's nothing she needs in that respect. And we've we've just enjoyed, we've enjoyed um, owning her. What then, sort of speed do you get? Just so so we've had uh, about 32 knots right uh, over the water. So I think allowing a couple of knots of tide, I think she's easy up, up into th you know 30 30 plus. Yeah. Um, and and just so smooth. Mm. As I said, I've got nothing to compare it with, but it, it just feels like she's on top of the. You know when a boat's properly on the plane, yeah, and you're not just skimming, just skimming exactly. Yeah. You're not feeling the the, the bumps or anything. It just flattens out. She trims nicely. We pull the bow, the uh, the outdrives in. We've got trim tabs as well with the bladed trim tabs rather than the the paddles, uh, and uh, that that trims her nicely. And we're we're, we're pretty much flat uh, at full pelt. So yeah, she's 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 a lovely thing to own. Things happen a lot quicker at 32 knots <laughs> than I'm than I'm used to. So yeah. yeah trips from Chichester to, to Livington, uh, you know, whereas before I'm having to make allowances and thinking, right, well, where will we have a lunchtime stop? You know, the, the idea is we have a lunchtime stop at their destination. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great thing. We've, we've enjoyed it and, um, and she's, she's comfortable just, just for two or occasionally four. She's absolutely great. Mm -hmm. Then we decided to go to New Yorker. So we did that. We were quite careful about the whole um, lockdown situation and we kind of got back into it quite quite slowly and our first big trip abroad our first flight for Jan as well was um, was to Mallorca for the boat show we wanted to think about having a boat out in the med I think we mentioned this last time we spoke and you laughingly said <laughs> jokingly said well the answer of course is two boats right and and of course that 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 is an answer mm -hmm. um, and we went out to be honest with that mindset uh, and we thought, right, let's 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 see what can happen. You know, what, what we can see. So we took ten days, first two days of the boat show, and the rest of it we were visiting every single marina. I think that was that had space, um, with the exception of Alcudia and that in the, in the northern part of the island. And um, it, you can see why it's a boating mecca. But there were a few things that we found weren't quite. What we expected. The first thing was the availability of berths. So because it's so popular, some of the main main marinas are quite quite busy. Mm. So it, it was a not always a given that you would get a berth in the marina that you wanted. So there might be the element of taking one in some one marina and then waiting until a, a suitable berth arrives. I think exception for that is obviously if you buy a boat that's already in the, the marina, you can often that can often be transferred. Uh, and the second point was the cost of the birthing as well and we thought well you know we're used to paying so for a 40 footer you're typically paying about uh, 
12,000 in the UK, something around about, about that per annum. In, in, in Mallorca, and, you know, they all, I didn't get quotes from everyone, but I got quotes from two or three marinas. You know, for the same size boat, we were somewhere between 30 and 40,000. Wow. I know, and yeah. it's, 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 a, it's a reality that you just have to accept for being such a nice boating area. And it is, you know, you come out the little colours and, you know... You, mm. you, oh, it's you fabulous. Beat, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, totally. You're preaching to convert it. You, yeah. You've done it several times. Yeah. But it, it's, a, it's a lovely area. You know, it's kind of like a... It's got a Solent, Solent feel. Mm. You know, you can come out and turn left or right and you've got places to go. Uh, so so that was... That, that brought into sharp focus our finances, which aren't limitless. And we started thinking, well, crikey, I'm not sure two boats is really doable. You know, really realistic. You know, so so then we we came back and we sat down we really thought about it we got, got the beer mats and the back of the beer mat out again there were quite a few of those um, I hadn't drunk all those beers by the way just, <laughs> just, <laughs> just had, had them lying around yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely and um, we, we've kind of changed tack again okay which again we hadn't thought about until we've made this journey out to New York and then come back and thought about it and the idea is, I think. And then, right there, right at that crucial moment, my GoPro overheated and stopped working. <laughs> Unbelievable. However, ever the professional, not to worry, had a spare GoPro in the bag, dived in, got it out, fired it up, off we went again. Got the video finished. Excellent. Got home, <laughs> uploaded it to the editing suite, and um, no audio. No audio on the second one. Never happened before, never happened again, but for some reason, there was picture and no sound. So I messaged Steve and said, listen, I'm really, really sorry about this, but that video we made, about a quarter of it is missing because when we changed GoPro, there was no sound. And he said, oh, that's very unfortunate, but not to worry. Next time we're in the area, give me a shout, we'll finish it off. So about three, four months later, I was back in Southampton area and I called Steve up and said, I'm coming up to your neck of the woods. Any chance we can finish off the video? And he said, yeah, absolutely. And I have a surprise for you. <laughs> I bought a new boat and he wouldn't tell me what it was so uh, yeah I headed back up the uh, the Beneteau 38 GT was gone and there was a new vessel in its place so we've made a new video that's going to come tomorrow and you can find out the uh, the ending to Steve's adventures in boat buying <laughs> it's quite interesting so there we go sorry about that a little bit embarrassing but um, yeah we sorted it out and uh, and you'll see that as I say coming up all being well tomorrow. So tune in and uh, we'll see you there. Take care. Bye-bye.